light for you in dark places when all other lights go out. Hey guys, this is DCHL Devin here. And this is DCHL Walker. And welcome to another episode of A Light in the Dark. And uh, this is our question and answer episodes where you guys post questions in the comment section below and then we answer them here. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. Uh, we have our first question for today. Uh, it's from Elias Kint. And uh, he says, hey guys, my question this time is, I was wondering what do you think of the following list and is it legal? Uh, so he, uh, I'm going to go ahead and post it on the screen here. It's Gildor and Glorian with 11 uh, Noldorian exiles, or Noldorian exiles, with bow and spear. Uh, Meridoc, Captain of the Shire, 11 Batlin Brandy Bucks. And uh, Peregrine, Captain of the Shire, with 11 Batlin Brandy Bucks. Keep up the good work. So, um, first, just to make sure, I believe the Batlin Brandy Bucks are the ones that provide strength. But just to verify. Which ones do I see? Uh, yeah, strength. Yep. Yep. All right. So, it, so, basically, for those of you guys who don't know, Mary has the ability to upgrade any Hobbit militia into Batlin Brandy Bucks, which have a strength of three as opposed to their standard strength of two, which all Hobbits generally have. And um, so, what do we think of this? Um, I wish he actually put the points on here. Uh, but Which judging easy. by the amount of points, this is pretty small. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is less than 500 points. What is four times one? All right. So um, actually, after calculating this up, it seems like this is a 300 point list or about that. Um, so what do, what do you think of it? Actually, it's such a small point size. What do you think? I think it's kind of cool. Um, I would take it you're using the exiles as sort of like ranger esque type. Protecting the Shire and the, if the Shires come out to fight with them. It seems like a pretty cool kind of scheme um, They have a quick movement so they'll be able to move around the battlefield and mitigate the uh, Hobbit's slow movement um, And definitely upgrading them to the strength three helps out a lot Yes, I completely agree with them. Actually, uh, I have seen some lists where they use a lot of sheriffs and I love sheriffs but if you're going to use Hobbit Militia, then upgrading the Strength 3 is a must. I think when I play Hobbits, I automatically assume I'm going to have a lower fight value than like everybody else. So having them at Fight 1 doesn't really bother me on that. Yeah. Seems like for a 300-point list, you actually have a model count of like 33 models. Which is, that is pretty awesome. Yeah, that's actually not bad. Most are only going to have 20 or less. Yeah. So um, you're, you're going to outnumber most people. Um... The uh, bow and spear, I'm assuming you're throwing the Noldorian exiles as the attempts to be behind the hobbits. So, although what Walker said about the speed, uh, I think that's a secondary option, though. Yeah. Because uh, judging by the list, it seems like he intends to keep them in the back. Which is not a bad idea, either. No. Um, you get no. a solid battle line, then, because then the elves are giving you that fight value. Yes. Um, which you, you, know, you don't have as a hobbit. <laughs> I like it. I, I really think cool. if you're talking about weaknesses, you are fragile. I mean, highly, highly fragile. I think you know this, of course, but you're definitely aiming to shoot the opponent down like as quickly as Throw possible. Throw a lot of rocks. Yeah, I mean, the thing about hobbits is they only really work when when spammed. So you Ooh. now are removing. I did the spam find something that's not illegal. What's that? Yes, too many bows. No, thirty-three percent. So when you ally in, the ally doesn't count. Oh, yes, that's right. It's 33% per list. So, yeah, uh, definitely. Your, your list is actually illegal. That's right. Um, so what you could do is make the elves 33% bows. Mm -hmm. So if you if you bump them up one more, the, mm -hmm. it'll give you the points to put one more elf in. So you'd get, what, uh, four bows? Yes. Um, and then you could give the hobbit some bows, or you could just put in more Something. Honestly, I'm almost uh, tempted to say just get rid of the elves since uh, the, it's going to cause you a pain in the butt to try to. Uh, I guess you can just get rid of all the bows. Get rid of the, all the bows. Uh, just go down to three bows and or give them the hobbits. Hobbit bows are actually not bad, especially since they can be spammed. Nope. Um, and you can take them though. You wouldn't have battling brandy bucks anymore. You'd have bounders uh, or hobbit archers as they call them here. Yeah, so, but mixing those would be just fine. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, your list is illegal. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, you just have to drop the bows uh, down to four. All right, that's all. Well, let's go ahead and get into our next question. It's from Edward Ball. He says, "Hey guys, are there any plans for a Nova 2016? 
he uh, would have loved to come, but he has... Uh, I'm sorry, lost my place. <laughs> he would love to come and kept the GBHL guys aloft this year, but uh, unfortunately, due to having to sit on some exams, both uh, the week before and after the event, he just can't make it. Uh, so to answer that question, um, yes, yeah, there will be a plan for Anova 2016, uh, assuming we have the numbers. Though uh, the, the CEO of uh, Nova actually has already expressed that we are making our numbers. So he says we're actually doing just fine. So yeah, as far as I'm concerned, there will be a 2016, 2017. We're going to do this year after year yep. uh, until, you know, until we don't get the numbers that we, we need for the year, which actually at this rate seems like we should always have for quite a while. Yeah. So thanks for uh, signing up, guys. It's appreciated. <laughs> yeah. If you haven't signed up, you should because I don't know what it means that I'm like doing so great. Since we segued into Nova, register now because the prices will go up again here soon. Yeah, they were. Um, they've gone up once. Um, so if you want to save that extra ten dollars, so you can spend on I don't know stuff there. Yeah. Visiting around things like that. You want to do that now um, and register for the events and everything. Like we said, uh, we're unsure exactly the full registered numbers yet for us, uh, but we know we're starting to get quite a few. So uh, what is our, our open events are already full. Yeah, exactly. Um, so if that's any indication, that means all the rest of our events are filling up. So please, guys, register now um, and get your spot saved if you're coming in. All right. Well, as for the second part, he actually added another part. Yep. Uh, he said, secondly, regarding Mummox and a banner in the Howda giving re-rolls, the answer is a resounding no, I'm afraid. I'll admit the answer isn't in the rules section of the SPG manual or the Fallen Realms book, but is, in fact, the basic principles section of the manual. Paragraph 2 on page 9. Surprising what answers can be found in parts of the book no one reads. Uh, hope preparations for Nova are going well and that whole Regrets. of the Americas are getting ready for some ass whooping. <laughs> so uh, he says, uh, pleasant tidings from Nottingham, England, the tabletop center of the universe. So to read that part that he's talking about is paragraph two, page nine, mm -hmm. is talking about measuring. Um, and basically to measure between models, always measure between the closest two parts of their bases. There you go. All right, so the debate has been settled by Edward Ball. Um, manners on a mummock does not give uh, bonuses to anyone. So we'll, well go ahead and give bonuses to the guys riding the how to. <laughs> yeah, well, they were got it. Better. Well, they got it already. The mummock right, right. them, but yeah, so. Uh, yeah, and then not that it would matter, they never get into fights. Um, but yeah, okay, great. You're, that's an awesome find, you're right. No one actually reads this book. Or, I, or, I did read it, <laughs> but I didn't get to paragraph two. Yeah. I only got to paragraph one. Yeah, and then we stopped. Reading. And I was satisfied with that. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, uh, thanks for definitely pointing that out to us. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, put links in all the videos where we discuss this and credit you for finding. Yep. And um, yeah, definitely stay tuned, keep us uh, corrected. It's always great to discuss. So, um, and as far as your last comment about America's getting ready for some ass whooping, uh, this, is, this is turning into a big thing. Clearly he's British, if we, we keep already trash established that. <laughs> I think if we keep trash talking uh, England, they're going to, uh, and they show us up, then uh, I don't know. We'll cry, maybe, <laughs> or just beat them up, I don't know. <laughs> no, it's it's gonna be all fun, guys. Um, you know, smack talking is part of the hobby, and sometimes you win, sometimes you don't. Um, we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens with the GBHL when they get here. It'll be fun. I look forward to it. It'll be a good game. It'll be good battle reports. Anyway, we look at it, it'll be just a blast. Well, uh, as for our next question, we have Dylan O'Connell. He says, uh, also, what are the specific rules for things like a Spectre being able to have a model dismount, then lie down, and also command and compel? All oh, right. All right. So <laughs> this is a new debate. <laughs> Edward Ball, if you can help us with this, I suppose. <laughs> Since you seem to be the uh, resident rule expert, you, you have all the words. Yes. <laughs> so this one has been actually... Um, really argued as well the technical answer is yes the spe from from what we've ruled and from what we've read 
Yes, the specter can force you to get off your horse, lie down, roll around, and anything. Now, uh, can't uh, as far as casting command and compel, I believe uh, you can make him even do that. And uh, just to verify that, you're gonna pull up the specter. Yeah, uh, here for some of you guys wondering, you're like just hearing this. Command and Compel, that spell, literally says you can't make complex actions, such as Lie Down, such. Uh, in fact, I believe that's exactly what it says, right? Yeah, so on um, page 78 of the rule book, the Command and Compel spell, you can look up the rules. Well. Yep. Oh, here we go. All right, All right. Uh, the caster can move the target model up to half of its maximum move distance. He can, uh, he can do this even if the model has already moved that turn. That's important to know as well, guys. The move cannot force the victim Cannot force the victim to jump, leap, climb, or lay down. Yes. But can take it into difficult terrain and even make it charge an enemy. Yes. Now, as far as the specter, the ruling is actually different. A lot of people think the wording is the same. It is not. Yes. It says, at any point in its move, a specter can choose an enemy model anywhere within 12 inches. And um, notice the wording on that first off. Well, we'll skip that part. Uh, this target must pass a courage test or it will make a full move under the control of the evil player, even if it has already moved. All right, so, so far the same. This move cannot be used to enter another model's control zone. Now that's a major difference. Yeah, yeah. compel can make you charge another opponent, even if it causes terror, you don't have to take a terror test. Exactly, this one you can't. However, on the flip side, um, it says, oh, and you can't perform an action that would cause harm to the target, such as jumping down a cliff. Yeah. Affected models may not move further that turn. Now notice that, the lack of wording. Command and compel specifically includes a clause that states. Yeah. So, and, and that's the problem that this book is older, this, the Hobbit rules are newer, so they probably updated them a lot, but we haven't got anything official, so it goes off of the wording. There's no FAQ, so yes, a Spectres can force an entire Cav army to get off their horses and dismount them. I've had people do that to my hunter orcs when they're, my uh, captains are mounted on wargs. They get, make them get off and then my warg sticks around. <laughs> and then I laugh at them like, ha ha, now you have two models. <laughs> once for free. I mean, it, going off of courage too is a bit difficult, but yeah, once you have a war arm. Yeah, a war arm takes care of that problem. So, yeah, it's kind of unfortunate. And actually, I've even seen it go as bad as this where they'll make your front line lay down and force you to be trapped. <laughs> um, yeah, that's me too. So, I, I mean, here's a caveat to it is that they added that new rule in the Hobbit rulebook where if you pass a courage test for a specific ability, you, you cannot be affected by that ability again. Yes. So, uh, that kind of gives the advantage there because compel, you can keep firing it at the same model. Yeah, because it's a spell. Yeah. So, it's different. And arguably, it's easier to pass a courage test than it is to resist, resist. magic. Because yeah. you would have to have resist magic. So, yeah. So uh, yeah, that's it for that question. So um, let's go to the next one. So Samuel Taylor. Yes, uh, he says. Here, I'm gonna read this one. All right. God, hog the spotlight. Jeez. I love reading your questions. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the vid, guys. Uh, I actually wanted to ask about the Citadel Guard on horses. On horse, sorry. And whether it would be worth it. Uh, so do you think? that having a fight for supporting is worth it? Or should I always go for the lances? So this goes back to a video we posted a little while ago talking about how cavalry models with spears can support other models regardless of what base size um, based on the rules. And Citadel Guard are the only ones that can actually be mounted and have a spear. Yeah. Um, is it worth it? Yeah, maybe. Well, he's you always would, go for the lances. I don't uh, think Citadel Guard can have them. No, lance. he's talking about having Knights of the Lamb. Oh, off. just switching. Yeah. Completely. Oh, okay. Um, gotcha. Is it worth it? I would rather get the, the Cav in there because they get the extra attack. Yeah. But if they couldn't reach, it's which nice. usually on that first turn when you're going around uh, enemies' flanks, you can't really reach, um, and it wouldn't be bad to have that spear support behind it. It's a really expensive though. Um, Just to get fight four, you're talking about like an investment of like yeah. But what's points. the knights of the Lamoroth fight anyways? I think they're, they're fight four already. Four, so. Yeah. Um, actually, or if he was good. Oh, he might. He's talking about Minas Tirith. He's talking about yeah. He's talking about supporting them, and so you will get the upgrade to fight four. 
Um, well, you won't beat elves. You would be pretty much any other evil. I don't think you make it down to a force expecting to beat elves. Though. No, fight. he's going for just the standard armies that you see. Beating, beating orcs and things like that. I would say it would be much more important to have a banner with your cavalry for that reroll um, rather than having the extra attack. I mean, that's almost equivalent. Um, you know what I would do? This I, I would actually say sprinkle a couple in there. It's not a bad trick. It's an expensive trick. It costs you like 14 points to do this. Um, 15. 15. Sorry. 15 well, points. Can we say for, how many points? <laughs> yeah, I, well, in this case, we're not really, we're adding it all up, so you, you couldn't play the game knowing that. True. Um, so basically, right. um, it, it would cost you a hefty amount of points to give one extra attack and a spear support. And it's not a terrible idea. You know what? As long as you only do a couple. I wouldn't do it the same way you would do battle lines. So, like, don't do six Knights of Minas Tirith with lances and six spear supports. I don't think that's a good idea. If I would do something, if you say, like, you were taking four Minas Tirith, Knights of Minas Tirith and then two, two Citadel yeah. Guard, you wouldn't need very many because couple. you want them to wrap around. You want your calf to envelop them anyways. Yeah. Um, that's really what they are. They're the shock troops. They're the shock value. Um, so yeah, so just a couple. Just um, a couple. All right. Now, lastly, before we move on from him, he says also he's, uh, he's going to he's going to Nova. Yeah, yes, he says very excited for Nova, guys. Hope you guys can come our way to Ontario sometime too. Uh, oh yeah, okay. Um, I guess he might be coming to Nova. I, I, yeah, I know a bunch of the guys from Ontario are coming, and actually, yes, for you Canadian players who are watching, and we'll go ahead and post this. I actually have plans in the work to get some of us to uh, Canadian tournaments in the future. So um, you may notice that DC Hobbit League is already a member of the, um, I think it's the OS, SBG, uh, OT, OT SBG. That's the name of their Hobbit League up in Canada. Uh, okay. And um, Ontario Hobbit League? Yes, Ontario SBG, <laughs> yes. So it's not the OTHL, it's not like that. But, um, but, but yeah, basically, we do want to support you guys just as much as you guys are supporting us. Heck yeah. And, uh, I mean, you're in North America, so we might as well all join forces. I haven't and, been to Canada. Yeah, we'd love Canada. to come and take a trip to Canada. So, um, that is something that we can definitely try. Uh, take a lot of coordination, a lot of planning, and right now with Nova in the works, we have to wait till at least after that. But in the future, you will at least see me. I know that for a fact. Um, as far as anyone else who's coming, that can only be wait to be seen. Yeah. So, um, next question. We have Wild War Gaming. He's asking if we could help him with a 600 point Azog's Hunters list. Yes, we can. <laughs> and, uh, Hopefully. <laughs> so, you guys see it up on the screen here. So, basically, I'm not going to read it all. It's just got a rundown of Bolg, the new one who is mounted. And uh, Fimble and Narzug leading at full, uh, well, actually just 11 hunter orcs in each warband. He says this army is supposed to be representing the orcs when they hunted down Thorn's company in the barrels. Uh, should he add a banner or warhorn? Thanks. Wild War Gaming. Which, if you guys don't know, actually, Wild War Gaming actually has their own YouTube channel as well. Um, and so, but as far as their list is concerned, um, all right, 600 points. Let's see. Let's go right into it. I mean, it's a pretty standard list. Uh, I It works. I mean, you have, what is that, 35, 36 units, and uh, in a 600-point list, that's pretty solid. Um, it's not... It's definitely a one-trick pony. It, it, as you start to die, you will hate being broken. I mean, really badly. Yeah. This is where you'll probably get uh, Walker to give you the advice of... The Warhorn, would you? Is that what you would say? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Resounding yes. All right, so uh, the many, many games I've played with my Hunter Orcs, I'm usually dominating the game, beating back my opponent. Unfortunately, as soon as you hit that breaking point, your Courage of Two takes you off the battlefield. Yeah. And your models just start running away left and right. And actually, the Warhorn is well worth the points. Um, you don't necessarily need... Sorry a uh, banner as much as other armies because you have those two attacks on foot uh, where the Warhorn keeps you from running away. Especially with Balk, he absorbs a lot of points. Um, and 
the rest of your hunter orcs that are probably enveloping your enemy because you, you're a single line army, um, and I do it all the time with my <laughs> that that thirty the the whole bunch of points for that warhorn is well worth it. It, it I would definitely put it in. It's going to help you if you break. So, uh, in advice for taking it out, like getting it in there, what would you take out? Uh, you really, it's, it's you're going to take out three hunter orcs. It's really what you. Yeah, uh, that's rough. Um, you know, it, what? it's what you have to do. Is Narzug that much more expensive than a hunter orc captain? No. <laughs> no. Yeah, so nah. You'd recommend keeping Narzog in there. Narzog, Thimble, uh, Yaznak are all really, really good. I would take them before I took regular captains. So really there's no way to do it. Most of the time. If you're asking to put in a Warhorn or a Banner, there's really no, no other way to do it than to just simply scratch an Orcs. Now here's the thing about that. Um, I think you'll save more in the long run having Courage 3. Um, yeah. But I wouldn't do the Banner. No, no bad. Really you know, not for this amount of points. Yeah, uh, you already have two attacks per model. I mean, you really don't need a banner. There is no real reason you need to have one as of right now. Um, if you were going to a tournament where they're playing the uh, to, the, to death. the death, yeah, you take a banner because it scores your victory points. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's completely different. Yeah, just but casual gaming, you're stronger with that one. Yeah, you're, 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 you're just fine with that one. Your hunter orcs don't need it because of that extra attack you have on top of everybody else. It's so worth it. Um, the bows are actually really, really good in hunter orcs, surprisingly yeah. enough. I um, actually think this is a great idea. Actually, did he? Oh, he didn't even max out his bow. So no, just didn't. so you know, in case you don't know, you actually have a 50% bow limit, not a 33% bow limit. Your list is catering toward 33. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. I, uh, I do the 33. I haven't found it. I'd actually want to play a game sometime soon where I actually do the 50% bone limit and see mm -hmm. how well that works and see if it's worth it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, even the 33%, I've found many a times I'm, it's well worth it. The, what I would often, here's what I would say to that. You have uh, 597 points. Add three more bows. Well, if he, those, I was at, the three points he's going to need for the Warhorn. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, then there's that. Um, but uh, I got you covered. If you choose not to take the advice on the Warhorn, add three more bows because you you're not maxing out. Yeah, no, go ahead, take three more bows, and even sprinkling them in the other units is totally fine. Mm -hmm. uh, the other war bands, uh, just because they can either run forward or they can sit back and shoot, grab objectives for like uh, domination mm -hmm. or storm their camp and things like that. Exactly. You can have your bow guys sit back; they'll hold it, and the rest of your force will run forward and smack people around and. Yep. It's pretty awesome. All right, so we're gonna have to go on to the next question from ELS. Actually, this isn't a question so much, just a comment. Uh, he says, thank you guys so much for keeping this fantastic game alive. I salute you guys, GBHL, and all other YouTube channels that keep this game going. Woo! So we appreciate the shout out. And, uh, as far as all other YouTube channels, there is uh, LOTR SBG Battles. He will be coming to Nova. Uh, I know Wild War Gaming, as we just mentioned, uh, has their own YouTube channel. GBHL. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, everyone knows that. <laughs> if you don't know the GBHL, I'm shocked. <laughs> so, and uh, then there's also another channel. It's not a YouTube channel, but one that I actually like. It's the Green Dragon Podcast. They have been on a lost, kind of just net producing anything for a while, but they've just produced a new video, and they say they are back. They say that they just are busy, and they're back in full swing. So that's another one. Nice. Uh, if you look on our site, DC Hobbit League, uh, I will have a link for them in our community section. Awesome. So, thank you. Uh, let's go to our next question. Uh, just so you guys know, we also cover some uh, questions on the One Ring forums, just seeing what's going on in the community and things that we're interested in. Um, and in this one, we have uh, Mr. M Man, and uh, he says, when really is the best time to use might? Uh, should it be used to win fights or just to make sure a hero wounds? Also, which targets should be used against? Normal infantry, heavy infantry, heroes? I know there's always situations where you want to use might against any model, but seeing as how it's an a non-renewable resource, I always never end up using it for fear of needing it later. So, how do you use might? We chose this question actually because it is a pretty good. It's a loaded question. <laughs> There's so many different ways to use might. Yes, and um, different times to do it. We actually covered this in our magazine that will be coming out the, uh, very soon. 
And uh, for those of you guys who don't know, we're producing one is just like the GBHL. And we actually did a section on uh, when do you use money? Honestly, when, and uh, it is a hard question, but uh, we felt like it was definitely worth answering. And just to give it a rundown, I mean, this, the article goes in more, much more detail than this. Uh, we kind of broke it down a lot by um, what hero, first off, is it? So if it's a combat hero, then you want to be using it on combats. Heroic fights, heroic strikes, stuff like that. His role is to completely use it for that. I wouldn't waste too much time spending his might for heroic moves unless all your heroes are combat heroes. Um, then as far as other heroes like uh, wizards we and uh, magical heroes, we often felt that their might should be at most usually reserved for casting their spells. Heroic channeling. Yes. Either that or just using uh, uh, might to get the roll to the required amount. Uh, you also notice that like heroes like Druzhag, heroes like, I mean, a lot of those, they should be saving their might to cast the spells that you really need. Uh, so that way you can use the minimum number of will required to yep. cast. Um, and then maybe uh, leadership heroes who stay in the back should be the ones who call your heroic accuracies, heroic uh, moves, heroic marches. Yep. Uh, they're the ones who should be doing that. Then, and, there, then there's the heroic shooters, so Legolas, for example, yes. you want to save his might to take down those big guys for when you need it, to yeah. roll a wound or exactly. hit or whatever have you. Sometimes you get weird situations where a shooter hero is a combat hero, or a wizard is also a combat hero and whatnot. And then, of course, it's up to you throughout the course of the game and what his role is in your list. So if you pick, say, the upgraded Legolas and you intend to throw him into combat, well, then think of him as a combat hero. Don't use his might to upgrade his shots when you intend to throw him in there. Exactly. So um, that's kind of the first stage we went into. And uh, as far as uh, he actually kind of mentioned, I guess if you want to cover this, if you can think of anything off the top of your head, he says, uh, should it be used to win fights or make sure a hero wounds? So it, all, it goes down to what you're doing it for. Sometimes... I feel like it's a moral victory, like when I play my goblins, um, to have my captain burn all of his might to get a kill finally. <laughs> That's a motivational thing for me, and I think it, the dice gods favor me at that point. Um, that's totally superstitious, though, <laughs> and has no bearing on tacticalness at all. Um, sometimes it's worth it just to spend it to kill a bunch of troopers to break that flank. Um, uh, it really depends on what the mission is on that. If, I it mean, does. I wouldn't Play spend Mike going mission. after a whore army. That's what I would say, though. When I fight Walker's hunter work army, I don't think I'm spending Mike to kill off troops unless... It's needed. Well, yeah, yeah, it's He's either. surrounded or something like that. There's other caveats, too. You, you're, so, so, like, yeah. Um, uh, heroic fight. Yeah. If you if you call it a heroic fight and you need that, like say you're trying to get to their banner or loop around or something like that, uh, and you were really get, trying to go on this tactic, then burn yeah, it. Burn it to kill the, whatever you're trying to go. Not burn it completely. Maybe, unless you're like boring. Here, In, but, unless you need to. I mean, yeah. if, if you're taking out their banner or their uh, priest that's giving the army fury, it's well worth it to yeah. get your hero in there kill him, take him out, even if he burns through all his might, because your warriors will flood in afterwards, hopefully, if you get priority, um, and, and you can cover them. But it detriment, it hurts the enemy so much when that those things happen. Um, it's well, well worth it. Uh, yeah, think about the best way I do it when I'm thinking about using might or will or anything, uh, any of my points, is does it help me win the mission? If it does, then I'll do it, hands down, no questions asked, even if it's necessarily not the best choice or the best time. Um, I notice my evil army, I tend to hold my might until like turn five or six after the good guys have used up all their might. And the reason for that is, is because then I have that chance to hurry up, strike, win the combats, surround the enemy, um, and make it easier to kill their hero. Um, that's always really important. So um, this is the last bit of advice I give on that. And I tell this to all new players. Um, whoever has more might when the armies are broken generally is going to win. Um, and I say that because uh, when you break, with the exception of elves who stick around anyway, um, <laughs> it, when you break, often the goal of the game kind of changes. It fluctuates. Instead of trying to grab every enemy possible, you're trying to kind of back off almost and grab their heroes. But in order to do that, you got to make sure you gain priority. 
And because uh, you don't want the heroes calling stand fast. So if you have might and your opponent doesn't, then every priority is yours for the rest of the game, pretty much, until you run out of might. Uh, obviously within six inches, and obviously for that phase, but most important phase usually being the movement. Yeah. Especially when the two armies are broken. So you don't want to burn it all too quickly, as you mentioned. It, it's, it's a bit tough. <laughs> it's a bit of a... Uh, uh, a situational thing with Tyler. But those are some of our guidelines. Yeah. The, the best way to so. figure out how to do that, play more games. Yes, play lots of games. And try out <laughs> different strategies. Think about different ways to use the might. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there's tons of ways to use might. So. And actually, just this last bit, actually, this is another, uh, I mean, uh, not to pitch it too much, but going to tournaments. Desolation of Stockport, uh, the Canadians have a lot of tournaments going on, and actually we know uh, Lord of the Ring, Brown Ring is trying to set up tournaments in Chicago, we have LOTR SPG Battles, he's setting up tournaments, and we know that he just had a tournament very much recently, um, and you know, those tournaments you'll find expert players who you should just kind of watch how they use it, so, and of course ours being Nova, Historicon, and stuff like that. Yep. So, um, alright, well, uh, you got anything more for a moment? No, that's it, isn't it? Yep. That's, that's it. all our questions. All right. So Later, guys. Yep. See you guys next time. Make sure to check out our Facebook and uh, also our site. If you guys have anything, also uh, check out our Facebook and site because uh, Deadmar Spectre made a gorgeous model for us. Oh, uh, yeah. We are bringing the Necromancer to Nova, and he will actually be in Mordor's Arena, one of the events at Nova, and it is a beautiful model. Check it out. It's on Cool Mini or not. Definitely vote on it. And... Um, you know, it just, just, it, I mean, it's awesome. I think it's one of the coolest necromancers. It's actually based off of the movie rendition of it, um, the color scheme anyway. Uh, but all the flaming yeah. motif. It gets right. away from the, the typical green yeah. look. And actually, you know what? Uh, you posted up here on the page, uh, the, 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 the uh, I'm sorry, the screen, really fast so you guys can see it. But if you want more, just check it out. And um, he has lots and lots of photos. You guys know Deadmark Spectre. And if you don't, you should get to know him. Because Follow him on Facebook. Yeah. He does great work. So Absolutely. But all right, guys. Yep. We will definitely see you next time. Yep. Register for Nova. Quick. Hurry. There's no time left.